have taken a look at transport and deposition, now let's talk about the erosion of rivers. Now erosion is the process by which sediment is removed by water, wind, or gravity. Now erosion occurs all the time and there's lots of factors that can affect the rate of erosion. Now on your screen you actually see a couple of them. There's many many more but this is actually six that your textbook discusses. The first is load. Now the heavier and sharper the load the greater the potential for erosion. So if we have a lot of sediment and it happens to be very sharp, those rocks are, have sharp edges or the sediment is very sharp, we tend to see a lot of erosion happening. Those sharp edges and that heavier load is able to scrape away more of that soil along the river. Velocity. The greater the velocity of a river, it has a greater potential for erosion. So the faster moving rivers tend to erode faster. We also see the gradient. So an increased gradient will increase the rate of erosion. So the increased slope in this particular case. The geology of the land. So if we have very soft, unconsolidated rocks, um, like sand and gravel, they're also easily eroded. Other things like clays might be a little bit harder to erode away. So depending upon what type of rock and what type of soil is available, depends on how much erosion we're going to have. The pH, believe it or not, if we have uh, solutions that, are, um, that have um, higher rates of uh, acidity to it, those are going to e increase your erosion. So the rates of solution are increased when water is more acidic. And human impact, can't forget the human impact um, error <laughs> in this as well. Deforestation, dams, bridges, all the things that humans build actually will interfere with the natural flow of a river and this will also increase the rate of erosion. So if we uh, cut down a whole forest near a river, if we put up dams or even bridges, we're messing with that whole natural flow. So it's possible that we are actually affecting the rate of erosion, making it go a lot faster. Now talking about a river itself, we have a couple different types of erosion that we want to talk about. So we have a couple pieces of vocabulary, some processes of erosion that happen in a riverbed or a channel. The first one is abrasion. This is also called corrasion. So if you uh, hear the two terms being mixed, that's what it means. Corrasion is abrasion. Now this is the wearing away of the bed and the bank by the load that's carried by the river. So in this picture here, you can kind of see down here we have these large pieces of rock that as they move, perhaps by saltation, um, perhaps they're sort of skipping along or rolling along, they're actually eroding some of the rock and some of the soil that's down along the bed and the banks. So those rocks can definitely erode it. Now this depends upon the concentration of those rocks and soil, the hardness, the energy of the load, is it going really fast or really slow? And of course the resistance of the bedrock. If you have a soft rock, it's going to erode, erode faster. If it's a little bit harder, however, it might stick around for a little bit longer. Now do note that the abrasion also increases as velocity increases. So as the speed of the river increases, the amount of abrasion also increases because you're going to get more rocks, larger rocks moving down the, uh, the river bank. Let's take a look at attrition. Attrition is the wearing away of the load carried by a river creating smaller rounded particles. So if we think about um, all the stuff, all these larger particles that are sort of inside the bed and the, the banks are ready, Attrition is actually the wearing away of the load that's already there and it's going to create smaller rounded particles. So for example, maybe some of these larger rocks down here in the bottom, as they go through, they're going to get smaller and more round. And this causes a, a, the type of erosion called attrition. If you were to see uh, downstream in a particular a river or a, a stream of some kind, a lot of times you will see these very nice smaller polished rocks and that's always due to attrition. We also have something called hydraulic action. Now hydraulic action 
is the force of air and water on the sides of the rivers and in the cracks and this causes the rock to become unstable. So inside tiny little cracks here we have air and water being kind of forced along the sides of the river and they're creating these cracks or if there might already be cracks there they're making those cracks larger and it makes that rock become very unstable. Now sometimes you can see something called cavitation and this is where we have a force of air exploding. It might not be huge but you're gonna see these little bubbles kind of pop up here and there and those bubbles actually can cause a lot of damage to the surrounding rocks because it's air. Inside the bubbles you have air so once that air kind of explodes it's possibly able to move some of those cracks apart a little bit more. So hydraulic action and cavitation sort of work together and you can see these inside of a stream. You can actually see those little bubbles sort of along the, the sides of the rocks. Last but not least, we have corrosion. And another term for this is actually solution. Now this is the removal of chemical ions from the rock. So if we think of those chemical processes that maybe you learned about a long time ago, corrosion actually takes out some of those chemical ions and it's going to remove them from the rock. And it, in, in, in essence, it's actually creating that rock to become a little bit more brittle and those, uh, it's able to be eroded a little bit more, possibly by some of the other things. So when we're talking about solution, we're actually talking about um, the rocks again that are on the banks and the, in the beds of the river, but those chemicals kind of go into solution and they kind of get dissolved inside the water, carried someplace else and, and kind of distributed into other places. Last but not least, we have something called global sediment yield. Now, across the globe, we see a, a long or, or a whole global rate of land lowering. This basically means that a lot of the mountains and the higher regions, the high areas of elevation, are actually becoming lower. Now, we don't see this so much at um, plate tectonic boundaries. Where we see this is sort of in the middle of plates. One of the biggest places that we could sort of see a land lowering is actually in the United States along the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Mountains were once humongous mountains many millions of years ago. They extended pretty much from Maine all the way down into North Carolina and into Georgia. So this whole the Appalachian Mountains chain basically was huge. But because of erosion and because of weathering, they've been lowered. This also happens globally. Now, globally, we have, um, depending upon the place, we see about um, 0 0.004, so about um, four thousandths of a millimeter per year can be lowered, or we see about four millimeters per year, depending upon exactly where we're looking. And the factors for this global rate of land lowering include climate, of geology, relief, like how tall are these mountains, vegetation cover, and land use. So you see here, we're actually seeing a huge theme kind of running through the course so far, that a lot of the factors that depend uh, on a lot of the things we've been talking, talking about are based on climate reasons or vegetation cover. Now think of inception, and vegetation cover was a huge one about land use. We just sort of talked about how humans can affect erosion. So these same factors keep coming up and coming up. So keep them in mind as we move through the course.